Well, one of the things that unifies the critics that we've had on this Tony Award special is their years of experience and caring about the theater. But few of the people that we've talked to, for all the experience and background that they've had, had quite as much as our next guest, Glenn Loney. He has been a critic since 1956, started in Europe, and then... By 1960, he was already writing for Life and the New York Herald Tribune. He is currently the senior correspondent for NewYorkTheaterWire.com. That's NYTheater, and then a little hyphen, Wire.com. He also writes for NewYorkMuseums.com. Glenn Loney, thank you so much for joining us on the Tony Special, and you're going to be talking about all the design categories, right? Yes, and there are a lot of categories there and a lot of nominees. So let's get right to it. Set design of a play. You've got Coast of Utopia, Journey's End, Radio Golf, and Corum Boy. Your thoughts? Well, my favorite, of course, is Coast of Utopia. I think the thing is entirely brilliant. The entire production, everything about it was remarkable. And uh, when the Outer Critics Circle gave their awards, Jack uh, O'Brien made a really passionate speech about the need for us to finally do something about a national theater, not to have this uh, uh, desperately looking for money to make these things happen, but uh, uh, the National Theater in uh, London does these marvelous things, and if it hadn't been for them doing it first, we probably never would have seen it. Hmm. But what the designers did, not to mention, of course, the cast, uh, the designers made this a really remarkable experience. And the credits there goes to Bob Crowley and Scott Pask, of course, for the scenery. And as we know, mm-hmm. the costumes. Oh, well, yeah, let's go to the costumes. They've got Coram Boy, Heartbreak House, Inherit the Wind, and again, Coast of Utopia. Well, uh, my thoughts on uh, the costumes, once again, are that certainly the Coast of Utopia, uh, there was a wide range. Uh, one is dealing, of course, with a period work. So uh, we don't have a, a wide range of different and not particularly bizarre costumes, but I thought they were remarkably well achieved and suggested. Um, uh, Coram Boy is something really, for me, kind of peculiar because um, it was only after I'd seen the show that the producers sent me the book, and after I read the book, I finally understood what was going on there. <laughs> I mean, there were some dazzling images, but I thought, what is that angel that's flying down out of nowhere? And who is this idiot boy that's praying to her? What's going on here? (laughs) Uh, But it was certainly is a stunning production. But my advice to anyone thinking of going, taking the family, uh, read the novella. It's a children's book. It's easy to read. And all the threads come together very easily. And I think their problem was, as Lord of the Rings um, is having a little trouble in London at the moment, uh, but mechanical trouble, actually, that um, the adapters tried to get all the parts of the plot onto that stage, and sometimes you just can't do that without confusing people. That's true. And by the way, if you're thinking of seeing Coram Boy, you're too late. It closed last week, I, I believe. Oh, it did? Yeah, May 27th, they had posted it. Well, I'm sorry time. to hear that, because certainly a lot of effort went into it, uh, but I suspect that part of the problem was it was pretty difficult to find out what's going on here. Now, how about, let's let's keep with the plays for lighting design. You've got Coram Boy again nominated, up against Inherit the Wind, Three designers for the Coast of Utopia, and Journey's End, Jason Taylor. Your thoughts about design lighting of a play? Well, uh, uh, for many years, I'm the oldest living and longest writer for Theatre Crafts Magazine, which then became Lighting Design, etc. And one of the principles, of course, about lighting design is the best lighting doesn't call attention to itself, which means that often, because it's not showy, people aren't even aware of how subtly it's used. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think for, uh, uh, we could say, things that are kind of obvious about lighting, uh, with uh, um, Coram Boy as a play, the lighting was extremely important there, uh, obviously. Coast of Utopia, and there were three, uh, there are three nominees because each one of them was working on a different section of it. Ah. Uh, but I don't think that show would have worked as well as it did without the brilliant lighting because much of the... Um, um, set design were set pieces or set props, and if they didn't get illuminated right, and if they didn't disappear, let's say they're still on stage, but the light dies on them, so stagehands don't have to rush on and move them off, the lighting was extremely important in that uh, um, three-part play. Uh, As for Journey's End, well, we're in a a dugout underneath the trenches in Eastern France. Uh, I thought the lighting was, you know, effective, the set was effective, but there's a limit to what you can do with that. 
And as with Inherit the Wind, uh, uh, there wasn't very much that one uh, might do. But I think probably Coast of Utopia is absolutely the best in the lighting category uh, for that. And it sounds like the rumble is that it will be a Coast of Utopia kind of sweep for some of the design categories. Well, I think, I, I think we'll so, because it was yeah. distinguished work that was done. Now, Not that yeah. the other shows were, weren't also worthy. But, yeah, I mean, there can only be one winner, unless uh, there's the rare tie. It's just There's going to be one, and then four also rans. That's the way it goes, or three also rans. Now, let, let's get to the musicals. Again, staying with the design categories with Glenn Loney. Glenn, what do you think of the work on Mary Poppins, Spring Awakening, High Fidelity, and Grey Gardens in terms of their sets? Well, uh, when I first saw Mary Poppins, I didn't see it in London because the tickets cost too much, and if I don't get a press ticket, I don't go. Uh, but when I first saw it, I thought, oh, my goodness, tons of scenery. Look at all the scenery going up and going down. I mean, remarkable what they did, but I was, you know, as a, an old techie, fascinated by what was happening technically and not paying too much attention to the story and to the music. Hmm. Uh, fortunately, uh, they invited me back, and I have to say I like Mary Poppins uh, a whole lot more the second time around because I was finally paying attention to what was going on. Uh, but I think that Bob Crowley has done a brilliant job of designing those settings, the way things move, how things blend in one to another, and also being able to get the solid set stuff out of the way so that Matthew Bourne's dancers can have free range on the stage. Always a difficult thing when you have a musical with a lot of dancing not to block the stage with the sets. Hmm. What about some of the other categories, though, for set? Um, the, the other people in the category. Well, I, I thought Spring Awakening, it was very clever what they did because there are essentially some set props uh, on the wall. Uh, it was very basic, very elemental because it focuses really on the kids and the two people who represent the older authority figures right. uh, so that it's really about the action and their feelings. Uh, in some cases, and this you find also with John Doyle, say in Company and in the Sweeney Todd, which was also elemental in a way, it really helps to focus attention on what's going on. Uh, sometimes, and uh, this is something I had from John Lee Beatty a long time ago, John had done a beautiful set for something that wasn't working, and I said, but the set is so beautiful. And John said, Glenn, 15 minutes into the production, if something isn't really happening on stage, the best set in the world is not going to save the show. Oh, very true. Very true. So what about uh, the costume designs of a musical? It's Legally Blonde, Mary Poppins, Spring Awakening, and Grey Gardens. Well, my favorite was Legally Blonde, and some people thought I was out of my mind, but I really enjoyed that show because I don't go to movies much, and I didn't know there was a movie. Uh -huh. okay. uh, I think I know who Reese Witherspoon is. Somebody mentioned her name. But for me, this was an entirely new show. Now, I realize some people were saying, oh, well, you know, the show wasn't as good as the movie. But if you come to it with no preconceptions, I, I thought, well... Uh, so are you saying that's your favorite um, show in the category, or are we talking about costumes specifically? Uh I think it's really almost... Uh, no, I, Mary Poppins is probably my favorite show, but in terms of the costumes and the sets uh, in Legally Blonde, I thought they were really wonderful. Oh. But in terms of sets, let me see. I don't see that uh, Legally Blonde got a nomination, and that's David Rockwell, who's a genius. Hmm. Right. What about he did hairspray? He did hairspray. What about uh, lighting design of a musical? Now you've got Spring Awakening, 110 in the Shade. Finally got that one in there. Mary Poppins and Grey Gardens. Uh, well, I think probably 110 in the Shade profited greatly because it was a very minimal uh, uh, stage setting uh, from the changes in lighting to highlight things. I think the uh, Christopher Ackerman's lighting was very effective in that. But certainly, Kevin Adams is Spring Awakening once again, because it's really about the characters in movement on that stage. The lighting had to be clever and subtle and fast to keep them in the light without the audience being aware. I mean, you're not seeing dancing spotlights on the stage. Right. And it's very clever to be able to manage that. So if you had to choose your favorite show, Broadway or off, of the entire season, Glenn Loney, what would it have been? Uh, that's a tough choice. But I think probably the Coast of Utopia, I think it was one of the most important and impressive things that we've done on theater for a long time. Wow. Well, important and impressive are certainly words we can use to describe our wonderful guest, Glenn Loney. Thanks so much for taking part in the Tony Awards special. Thank you, Dave. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.